Oh man, so Young Thug is officially on his way home, man. He's released. Right now, we about to go over reactions, including from his father to his girlfriend. And also, social media, many rappers chiming in and reacting to Young Thug being free. But then we got like a post-game press conference from Thug's lawyer speaking on the whole situation. Really big shout out to Thug Dudley, man, on social media. Been keeping everything on point. Everyone updated with what's going on with this case. All the way to the point that Thug's free. So after 906 days in custody, Young Thug's booking has been updated as released from Cobb County to full central process. There are two people still left on trial. That's Yak Gotti and Shannon Stillwell, SB, all right? But Thug is in processing and about to come home. Boy, I can't wait for that first day out song, bro. I can't, I can't lie, I can't lie. But here goes the stipulations of his release. So he's banned from Metro Atlanta, has to do four presentations, concerts a year against gang violence, can travel from work to make music, no contact with gang members or co-defendants except for his brother and Gunna. Cannot promote gangs in any way, and the judge let him keep his passports too. By the way, let's go, legendary. So, Brian Steele, that boy did his thing, man. Now, the details of his sentencing. So, he's officially sentenced to 40 years in prison. 20 of those years is going to be backloaded, okay? So, he will be doing 15 years on probation, five years to serve, but that's going to be commuted to time serve. So, he'll be being released today. So, he has to do 15 years, staying on point, no issues for 15 years. And that time that's on the back end will drop off if he stays on his P's and Q's for 15 years. Now here's the reaction from his girl, the Mariah the Scientist. That's crazy! <laughs> All I know is them kids better stay far away from that dough. <laughs> stay far away from that dough, my boy. But um, on her story, she says, thank you, God. And I also sent out this message saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. This is more than what we prayed for. We are so grateful. This is the greatest opportunity we've ever been presented with, and we are so grateful. Thank you, Judge Paige Whitaker, for giving us the opportunity to move forward with our life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Brian Steele and Keith Adams and every attorney working on this case tireless. Thank you. I cannot say it enough. I cannot repay you for this. You have changed our life, Jeffrey's life, and mine. Thank you to everyone who has been there for us, every fan who believed in us and prayed for us. All right, now let's hear from Thug's old boy. Great that he's going home. I feel great that he's going home, but at the same token, I still want to fight. But that's his decision. That's his decision. You know, on the other hand, I raised him to be the man that he is. You know, I've always been in his life from a pup to now. And I'm going to continue to be in his life. You know, and as an adult, he has to make his own decisions. And you know, do you live here in Metro Atlanta? Yes, I do. So how does it feel like here that he's not allowed to be in Metro Atlanta? I'm totally against that because this is where he's from. You know, and to have a, to have a district attorney take that away from him that doesn't that isn't a residence from here. She's from another state. You know, and to see her how see her take a man away from where he's from to have to go live somewhere else, that's a that's offensive to me. I'm really offended by it. Can you talk you know about oh, sorry, I thought you were so, done. I was just saying, can you talk about your bond through music and part of his conditions is that he can still make music, still do some performances. I know you said you were hoping to get back to that with him. Yeah, we we're gonna get back to work. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're YSL, YSL loaded. I'm YSL loaded. You know, and in order for us to get back to our normal life, we're gonna have to put in some more work. We're gonna have to put in a lot of work, but the work that we need to do foremost for at the city of Atlanta, Fulton County, we need to get rid of the poison that's in our system. And that's the district attorney office. So vote. Courtney Kramer. Courtney Kramer. I support Courtney Kramer to the fullest. I feel like she's the best person for the job. And it's not because of what she said about us. It's because she said that and she was in my company and never knew who I was. Okay, so there you have it from Thug's old boy. Once again, he would not be able to go to the metro Atlanta area. So he's upset with Fonnie Willis because of that. All right, so some folks from around the industry tapping in. We got London on the track saying, thank God my boy coming home. 
Brian Steele, you a funk legend, boy. Travis Scott sends out love saying my brother on the way home with a picture of them two in a whip. Rapper Young Scooter posts a picture of Judge Whitaker saying I love you. You return the spotter. You got T.I. posting them saying welcome home, little brother. It's been a long, it's been too long. Time to get back to it. So, man, they have one of my favorite collaborations, man. That ain't about the money. I love that song, bro. Ah, yeah, man, that's good. That's good right there. That's good right there. Doughboy says, spot at home on Halloween. DJ Mustard says, thug free, what a day. Thug sister says, my little baby, to him coming home. Denzel Curry says, thugger, thugger. Shout out to the crib, 305, Kara City. Sexy Red said, they let twin out. <laughs> <laughs> they let twin out. That's funny as hell, man. Lauren LaRosa from the Breakfast Club says, uh, Thug's coming home and he wants to make music and have contact with Gunna. This is about to be interesting. Let's see how many people bust that U-turn on Gunna. James Harden puts out the slime emoji. Comedian Nav Green says, My cousin just said, Damn, cuz, you wasn't happy when I came home for jail. He said, Motherfucker, you can't rap. <laughs> Niggas is funny. Odell Beckham puts... Thugger. All right, man. So let's get to the interview from Young Thugs and Lawyers, Brian Steele and Keith Adams. Check this out right here. Collective opinion, Jeffrey would have been found not guilty of everything. So this is very painful. But that's another three months or so in custody. And he wants to go home to his family. And negotiations totally broke down with the district attorney's office horribly broke down. And at that point, we believe that justice would be found with the honorable court. And Jeffrey just wanted to go home. How agonizing it is to know that we've spent a year trying a case where the prosecutors have put on lies, knowing lies, hiding evidence, is insane in 2024 in the United States of America. And the only reason that this got revealed is because of you people. You people brought the truth to the community because nobody knows this. This is not the only courtroom it's happening in. And I just want to thank all of you. I especially want to thank Jeffrey for letting me represent him. I think he's a wonderful person who does wonderful things and will continue to do things even greater. I cannot express to you how Shaquille Kokomo, how Trisha Renard, how Haley, how my wife Colette, how Bram, how countless people, but especially Miss Courtney Edwards, has worked without sleep for three years representing Jeffrey and helping him. I will never be able to stand with anyone more ethical honest, hardworking, insightful, intelligent, and kind than the Honorable Keith Adams. The gentleman to my left is the best lawyer in the country. Mr. Steele, do you think prosecutors negotiated in good faith at all during any of these negotiations? Let me take this one. Let me answer that. The short answer is no. Um, this is a case that possibly could have been resolved if folks were reasonable. Um, but we did not believe that we could enter into good faith negotiations with people who wanted a case resolved in a manner simply to save face. And Jeffrey Williams was not going to say things that they wrote for him, that they wanted him to say, that was their theory when it wasn't true. And so, good faith, no. Uh, I don't believe we were ever really negotiating in good faith. And you've been here the past year that this case has been on trial. You've seen the numerous motions for mistrial. You've seen the behavior of the state. You've seen the dishonesty. You've seen everything being hidden. You've seen, th seen things come out in court, in front of you. And so you know what kind of prosecution we were dealing with. And that's okay. You know, Mr. Steele and I have fought through this the past two and a half years. And as he said, we ultimately decided we were going to put our faith in the court as opposed to the folks on the other side of the aisle. And, you know, the best thing out of all of this is that Jeffrey Williams, in a very short period of time, will be home. And that's all we've wanted from May 9th when they went and picked him up and have held him in jail without a bond for the past two and a half years. He'll be home shortly. 
Keith and Brian, this is either one of you can answer. So I have two questions for you. First off, you go into a blind plane, you don't know, right? There's, there's no, nothing for sure. Uh, what was your emotions like when you guys went into that? I would imagine the conversation, you kind of take us into the room before you went out into court, but the conversations were back and forth. Obviously, I know there's attorney client privilege, but it's a big decision. Well, I didn't want to do. I didn't want to give up the jury trial, um, but um, that was a decision made. And once that decision was made, um, we were just thankful that there are people like the Honorable Judge Whitaker who understands what a trial is like and what it should be like. And I cannot thank the Honorable Court for being here and coming in. She is not our first judge, but she's the first time we received justice. Mr. Adams, this is your second high-profile RICO case here in Fulton County. Do you think that maybe the prosecutor's office is, is abusing that statute? And what are your what are your opinions of, of RICO generally? I have, for the 30-some-odd years that I've practiced law, always believed that if you, as a prosecutor, think that someone has committed a crime, you charge them with the crime, you put it in front of a jury, and then you do it fairly and let the chips fall where they may. The courtroom is not the place to get adventurous, to get inventive, to think, well, we can't, we don't have evidence on him for any of these incidents, but maybe, if just maybe, we tie him up in a RICO and put him with people who may have committed crimes, we can get him that way. That's an abuse. And so, yes, for some strange reason, the Fulton County DA's office seems to be in love with RICO, and my honest opinion, is that they're in love with it because it makes it easier for them to try and convict people that they otherwise could not convict. And that's what was happening here. We we're fighting a, a mountain, reams of evidence, most of which didn't have anything to do with us. And so is it an abuse? I think it is. There are better ways to, and I, I used to be a prosecutor, right? And I can tell you that there are better ways to prosecute cases than the way this case was prosecuted. You guys obviously rejected initially what the state uh, was going to offer. What, is there some details you can give us? Because it sounds like from what you guys decided in the court, I mean, it's still pretty stringent. There's a lot of different details. But what was the state asking for that you guys rejected? I, um, I'm not going to get into plea negotiations because they are <clears throat> privileged under statute. But it was outrageous. outrageous. They would let him out of custody. But they would have a tether around him so tight that is unconscionable. How are y'all feeling about what the sentencing is, especially with not being able to be in Metro Atlanta except for specific parameters, and how is Mr. Williams feeling about that? You know, we're okay with the sentence. Um, there comes a time in, in any case, if a person is sentenced, that we're out of the courtroom, and now what happens to, to that person is entirely up to them. Jeffrey Williams is a fantastically talented man. Um, he is a, a great person. He's become a great friend over the course of the last couple of years. And he has the ability, the incentive, to go forth and do everything he needs to do to put this behind him. And we're confident that he will. One of the questions you asked a little earlier was what was that feeling like, stepping into a courtroom to do what's called a blind plea, not knowing what's going to happen? You know... It's a scary feeling for all involved. There's probably no feeling quite like that other than sitting in a courtroom waiting for a jury to come out and tell you what your fate is. But we walked in there knowing that we were in front of a fair tribunal and being comfortable that the right thing was going to happen and the right thing did. What do you think about your client just serving as a role model? Obviously, it's part of the, uh, the agreement, um, he's going to be participating in the community, doing events, things like that. Obviously, he has a huge reach for what he does for a living. Um, I, I've known Jeffrey Williams. I've defended him for over a decade. I have been with him where we go to young children, children in need, children who are going down the wrong way. And he tells exactly what he's going to continue to say. He tells everybody this is not a good life. We have to stop the generational disaster that is plaguing the community. And although I, right now I'm successful, I'm a product, but every one of you can get out. And he always stresses education. 
Jeffrey Williams is a great person, a great role model, and he will do even better now, hopefully, if you allow him and his words to get out. As far as how Jeffrey's feeling now, he knows my feelings, which I'm not going to reveal for attorney-client privilege, but this is not the same as a not guilty verdict. That should have been rang. But nobody here wakes up every day on a concrete floor that they're calling his bed, gets up at 4.15, gets shackled at his feet, his waist, and his hands, comes to the Fulton County Courthouse to be on concrete, eating out of a bag. Doritos is his meal of choice. And then coming to a courtroom and sit there with a leg chain on him every single day and hear lie after lie. So for Jeffrey, go home today and not have another 90 days or 120 days of it, he is very happy, thankful to the Honorable Court. So to answer your question, this was not what I wanted. I don't believe that it is just, but I believe that under these circumstances, it is justice for Jeffrey Williams, and he is delighted, as are we. I'm thankful. Jeffrey Williams is being truthful. That is his heartfelt feelings. He feels so bad for the loss of life. And he feels bad that people are taking his music or his social postings and making it into violence. That is all promotion. That is not a symbol of go hurt somebody. So I hope I've answered your question directly. But how I felt, I, I've heard that from Jeffrey over and over again. You called out a lot of challenges in this trial based on the prosecution's points. Do you have any message to you know the co-counsel that for now is still on trial or what's left of us? Oh my God, they are phenomenal lawyers and I'm confident if you keep going, which I assume you will, you will see some great lawyering. They don't need my help. And, and the truth is they've been there with us for the past two and a half years. Um, they're aware of what they're up against. They are totally capable of handling it. And I presume we'll step in from time to time because, you know, in this fight in the past two and a half years, we've been together. So we needed something. They've been there to assist. And if they need something, we're happy to step right back in and assist. Um, but they're great lawyers. Max Shard, Doug Weinstein, uh, those gentlemen are in great hands. They'll be fine. I, I will say this. I think it is wrong, and it needs to be fixed, that an innocent man is arrested on May 9th of 2022, is denied bond, and has to plead guilty and NOLO to get freedom after two and a half years in custody. That should not happen. Nobody should be on trial. Juries. Think about what they're going through. Nobody should be on trial like this. And if Mr. Williams didn't have the resources, this never happens well for anybody. So I think it's an abuse to answer the AJC's question. I think it's an abuse of the statute of RICO to do this to people. Is it fair to say you don't believe justice is served today? I believe that Mr. Williams is home and I'm delighted. Justice would have been served on May 8th of 2022 if the grand jury no-billed his, his indictment. That would have been just. And it's wrong to be under investigation. He's been under investigation for 15 years. 15 years by task force of federal government and local government. Think about that. Think about your children doing that. And that's okay. If it's okay with you all, then we should really start moving to another country. I want to thank everybody so much for everything you do. I cannot thank you all because without you guys, no, this just keeps rolling in injustice. It's got to end. The criminal justice system, the presumption of innocence, the, the Brady rules, the ethical rules, they have to survive. Otherwise, we all are victims of this. Anyone can sit in that seat next to Keith Adams. Thank you all so much. And no one sees it unless you guys do what you do. But I tell you what, there is a whole world of people out there who have watched this trial 
over the course of the past two and a half years. The past year that we've actually been in the courtroom trying the case who are much more educated to how things work and unfortunately sometimes how things don't work. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Listen bro, shout out to them for fighting for Thug. Thug just gotta keep his nose clean man. But hey, it's your turn. Let me know what you gotta say in the comment section below. I'm going to get up out of here though. This is another update with Stace. Yo.